Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking to a good friend of mine, Greg. We met when we were studying classical guitar at the Guildhall School, and today we're going to be talking about his time as an Erasmus student, setting up the Happy Bagel Klezmer Orchestra, and coming up with creative classical music videos. So, hey Greg, first things first, I obviously call you Greg all the time. How should we be saying your name? Greg is fine. My real name is, is Gergely in Hungarian, but actually no one calls me that because that sounds too official. So they call me Gergő, which is a nickname of, of my real name. Uh, but Greg is fine in English. Okay, that's great. We'll go with Greg then. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you and I both met at Guildhall. I was a full-time student there and you were there uh, not visiting, but doing a, a year, is that right? Two terms. Two terms with Erasmus. Yes. Why don't you tell us about how that scheme worked and why did you decide to come to London? Okay, uh, the Erasmus scheme I think is really good because you know you can go to a university abroad in Europe and study there for a year or, or two terms or, or for one semester. Uh, so I was studying in Salzburg uh, then, uh, even though I'm from Hungary, uh, so already I was abroad. Uh, and then I finished my bachelor without doing Erasmus, and then I started my master uh, studies there. And then I, I had this plan already before that I want to try Erasmus. So. So I applied. I had to choose three cities or three universities uh, and then I had to put them in an order. So my first option was London, the Guildhall School of Music. And my second option was, I think it was Berlin. And my third option was Amsterdam. And, and when I applied, everyone said, oh, you won't get it because everyone wants to go to these cities and it's such a big competition. So I, I didn't even have big hopes, uh, but I still tried. I had to do some recordings uh, and maybe I, I had to write a letter of motivation, but I can't even remember. Uh, and that was it. And then I just waited and then I get the news. I got the news that that they accepted me in London. So, oh, great. Yeah. So that was that was really, really good news. And then I didn't even hear from Berlin and Amsterdam. I asked the Erasmus coordinator at my university uh, if it worked out there as well. But uh, she said that they don't know because since I was accepted for my first option, I had to go with that choice. I'm guessing one of the big things about it is changing teachers. How much did you know about your teachers before you applied? My teacher in London, you mean? Yeah, because yeah. typically, like, what happened with me is I, I go for the course and you have the teacher that is with you throughout that entire time. Yeah. But for you, you were changing teachers. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, I think changing teachers is, is really good for your music students. Uh, I just changed my teacher before actually because I started my masters with a different teacher uh, already. Uh, also because the the teacher who taught me uh, during my bachelor uh, retired, so I got a new teacher, and I was really satisfied with him. I really liked him. His name is Hans Prudel. Uh, and then when I was applying for Erasmus, I of course searched and I researched the teachers at the universities where I wanted to apply. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I really liked all the options. Uh, one option for me was the early music because I was just starting to get into early music. And then I also checked if there's a possibility at these universities to, to study those or are there any teachers who maybe teach both classical guitar and the early plucked instruments. Uh, and in London, uh, there, there was Robert Brackmore, who was the classical uh, guitar teacher. And, and then I saw that David Miller is also there uh, teaching lute and other early music instruments. 
So that sounded really good. Uh, so yes, uh, after I, I I got Bob as a new teacher, <laughs> uh, of course at the beginning it, it's it's always really really strange because you know I didn't know how to behave or 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 I, I didn't really know him as a person. I I did uh, wrote a few emails to him before I went to London, but that's all the impression mm. I had before. Uh, so in the first few weeks, it was just really, you know, slow. We, we had to get to know each other, uh, which it was really interesting. But then in London, <laughs> it all, <laughs> uh, yeah. what, what helped uh, in London at the Guildhall School is that we had these uh, group lessons every week. And then that gave me a better idea about how the things work in the guitar class there. I mm. think those those group lessons were really good and useful. Yeah, we we did have a nice little community of guitarists. Yeah, and I I think he fitted in quite well. Thanks. <laughs> we I used really to have liked some it there. Good fun. And what I also really enjoyed that uh, at Guildhall there are not too many guitarists, so it was really a a small com community, and we knew each other and we helped each other and everything. Uh, Whereas in Salzburg, uh, where I studied before, uh, there were so many guitarists. Also, there were like five or six guitar teachers, and then every teacher had a quite big class. So there were just too many guitarists. So I didn't even know all the guitarists just just by seeing them carrying a guitar case around. Mm. Uh, so I think it was much better to be in a smaller community. Yeah, I think that is actually quite unusual about Guildhall the size of the guitar guitar department i know in other places that can be one of the largest groups one of the biggest departments but in guildhall it really is one of the smallest ones which has yeah. benefits and and some drawbacks but yeah that idea of really getting to know your teachers and getting to know the group who can then help you with other things yeah that really helped me as well especially you know when i was a you know completely new to London and I didn't really know what to expect. Everyone was really helping me. Yes. So I like that as well. And also it's really good because there are more possibilities for you. If they need a guitarist for any project, then there's a bigger chance that they will choose you. And That's true. <laughs> before that in Salzburg, it was really hard to get a gig at the university as a guitarist because there were so many much, more, much better guitarists than, than I was. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was more difficult. It, the oh, cool. competition was was much bigger in Salzburg than at the Guildhall. Mm. Um. So once you moved to London, from what I can remember, it seemed to be quite quite a fast process. You started setting up what became the Happy Bagel Klezmer Orchestra. Yeah. What was your inspiration? behind that considering how new you were to London it, you know you really dived into this new project yeah that's because I had I was in a klezmer band before already so when I had to move to London or when I moved to London I decided that that's gonna be the first thing which I will do because I already I already had the basics of klezmer music so I, I uh, I loved playing klezmer music too, and then I had some experience uh, how to do it and and what to play and what to do. So, so yes, that was one of my first uh, things I wanted to do there. Uh, so I I just posted in the in a Facebook group in a Guildhall Facebook group that. Uh, I'm new at the Guildhall and I don't really know anyone, but I want to want to found a klezmer band. And then there were so many people who applied and who said that they wanted to play. Uh, uh, it was really overwhelming and it, it, was, I, it was really good uh, that so many people were interested. So, so at first I just went with the first applicants 
<laughs> because I didn't know anyone, so mm -hmm. I I didn't I didn't know really how to choose. And then slowly, uh, they brought some other people, or they just suggested some other musicians, and uh, so slowly. There was a band with 10 members, which was amazing because before that, uh, my classmate band only had four members. Uh, so it was a big change, but it really just worked by itself. So I hardly had to do anything. Of course, I, I brought the first songs and, uh, and the first street music parts and, and whatever, uh, but then I just accidentally found really good musicians uh, and they didn't really need any guidance so it really just worked well mm -hmm. so that I, I, I think I it uh, I was really lucky also uh, so we had our first rehearsal I don't know a few weeks after uh, and then we did some recordings too and then we started to organize some concerts and yeah, that was it. So how was that finding gigs to play in London? Because I imagine it would be so competitive just to find anything. Yeah, uh, I just started to write emails. I started, first of all, to, to Google places where, where a klezmer band can play because I hardly uh, knew any places in London since I was really new there. So So yeah, I just look for some places and ask for some suggestions and then I emailed them and then most of the time of course they didn't get back to me but we still could manage to get a few gigs uh, which was really good I remember the the first gig I got was at Jamboree which then turned out to be a really good uh, uh, concert venue in London and I remember that that uh, it was I think October or November then uh, when I got the gig and then they offered me a date uh, for May next year and I said okay because that was the only option so so we took it but my Erasmus scholarship was only until the end of March so I wasn't even sure if I'm gonna be in London in May the next year but I thought okay well maybe they will just do it with another guitarist uh, because I, I didn't know if I want to stay in London or not after that and uh, I, I basically thought that this klezmer band thing is just going to be a fun side project while I'm doing the Erasmus uh, scholarship. Uh, but then at the end I stayed, so I did the concert with them in May. And then I stayed for another year because I liked it so much there and everything worked really well. And then slowly, of course, uh, we got a few gigs for January and February too, so so it was. Uh, well, I can't say that it was a slow process because it wasn't. Because a few months when you are in the music industry is not much. It's not too long, so so it worked very well. Yeah, now that I think of it, yeah, it mm. was really lucky, and it was great fun. I, I remember coming along to, uh, I think a few of your gigs. There's one I remember at Luna. Yeah. Towards the very beginning. And it yeah. was just, it was so much fun to, to, to be listening and also just to be watching you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think that was our first real gig before, because before that we, we only had a few uh, at the school, like, you know, at the basement one, which wasn't really good. And then we had one gig at the Christmas festival, uh, bringing some Hanukkah spirit to the uh, Christmas festival of the guild hall. And yeah, then at Luna, we had our first real gig where there were 10 members on a really tiny stage. It wasn't mm. really a stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was it was so much fun. But unfortunately, that was also the last concert where, where 10 of us played because then everything's changed. It turned out that some people don't have much time. So, so some people quit the band, but then uh, there was a six piece band at the end which worked really well mm. yeah I, I think even though the numbers did you know come down as people were busy 
the people you had left were, were so special. It was really a fantastic group of musicians. Thanks. And I think so too. Yeah, they 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 were really they are really great musicians. Mm. And even if it was, you know, just a handful of people, the energy was still was still amazing. It mm. was it was really good fun. Thanks. Yeah, I miss it. It was it was good fun. <laughs> now, How... unfortunately, I am not playing in any klezmer band, so because oh, I'm what... back in Hungary. <laughs> yeah, are there actually... klezmer bands? Um, yes, yes, there are klezmer bands, but but different. Because what I liked in the Happy Bagels is that we were kind of an underground klezmer band. Uh, we we did some club concerts and we played at venues where the serious big klezmer bands wouldn't play. Uh, I know that there are a lot of klezmer bands like like this in London, but not in Hungary, because in Hungary we have one huge klezmer band. Uh, they are the klezmer band in Hungary, and then they you know play in concert halls and that places like that. So it's all very serious, uh, but there is no klezmer band in, in Hungary in Budapest where who who would just go to small clubs and pubs and play there for fun for everyone without mm. an entrance fee or anything. <laughs> yeah, but I guess that the fun is perhaps the most important thing. Yeah, uh, for that kind of music, it's yes, just so yes, much definitely. so much fun. Well, for every kind of music, I think. Of course, uh, yeah. Most important thing is that you have fun. So, recently, this year hasn't been the best time for live music. But you have been quite busy. I've seen you've been posting some quite creative stuff online, mostly with the ukulele and your own arrangements. What's kind of inspired you to do something a bit different? Is is the ukulele something you've always been playing? No, I actually started to play the ukulele in London because while I was there, I got a job as a guitar teacher and then they offered me some ukulele lessons too. Uh, so I got a ukulele from, from the school where I taught and then they told me that, okay, now there's 20 kids and I have to teach them how to play the ukulele. So first I had to learn, which wasn't that difficult as a guitarist. Uh, and then I really liked it. Uh, so that's how it all started. And then, then I don't know how how I really came up with the idea of playing classical music on the ukulele. I, I guess I just googled some things or tried out some things. Uh, I'm sure I saw some videos on the internet of people playing classical music on the ukulele and I really liked it, so I tried it and it sounded good. But then it took some time uh, to really do it more seriously so so once i decided okay now i will choose a few pieces i will try to transcribe them for ukulele which wasn't that difficult because i started with uh, some pieces originally written for baroque guitar which is almost the same because it has five strings and the ukulele has only four strings so i just needed to put the notes which were originally on the fifth strings an octave higher <laughs> or or however it worked uh, so that's how it started and yeah then I, I started to record some music on it and then I started to do some other things ukulele and guitar uh, kind of things and yeah that's all and is it mostly your own arrangements or not uh, yeah the classical pieces are my own arrangements. There are other, there are arrangements for those uh, pieces, but I didn't really like them. So, so I I did my own arrangements. But then I also play some some easier tunes like Christmas music or stuff like that. Uh, those are not my arrangements. Those I found on the internet. And so, when you are arranging, what are you thinking about with the ukulele? you know you have to kind of compress so much into that smaller instrument yeah what's your process for that um well the reason i i started to play baroque pieces first is that is, is because i i thought that baroque music sounds especially good on the ukulele i 
can't really tell why, but I've played a bit of baroque guitar before, uh, and it was really similar the the sound. I mean, of course it's different, but still, it reminded me of the baroque guitar. Maybe because there are fewer strings than on a uh, on a classical guitar. Uh, so that's that's why I started with those, and then uh, just recently I recorded this uh, cello piece, which was a bit more difficult because. Uh, because then I, I had to think uh, how to put those uh, lower notes from the cello uh, part to the ukulele and how it could work. So because I, I it, it was a it was really I, I had some really hard decisions to do because you know when there was a passage which went uh, down, then on the ukulele. I had a limited possibility, so so I had to either start from really high, or just start from the original place and then jump higher at one point. So so it's not the best I know. And and uh, I asked some cello players too what they think of it, and some of them said it's good, but some of them said that they really don't like it because it's really irritating how the music sometimes jumps at a point where it shouldn't be jumping. Mm. If you know what I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. But I still try to do it because I think, I think it sounds good on the instrument. So why not? Yeah, absolutely. And coming up with new ideas is is really quite a fun thing to do, even if it doesn't always um, fit perfectly. Yeah. Um, but from what I've seen, it's really working well. So. Thanks. Uh, I look forward to. Seeing some more. Have you got anything else planned for those videos? Mm, not right now. Now I just thought that I have too many videos with ukulele, so I should record something <laughs> on the guitar too, okay. because originally I'm a guitarist, so <laughs> I should do that. I was maybe concentrating too much on the ukulele recently. Greg, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you giving up your time, and I think people will learn some things about your experience as well, which is really great. Yeah, thank you for inviting me for this interview kind of thing. Ah, uh, you're very welcome. It, 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 it was really exciting because I just told you before that I didn't really have any interviews before in English. So <laughs> <laughs> so it was a challenge for me as well. And yeah. and yeah, I also hope that whoever watches this, this video or listens to this interview uh, is going to, I don't know, be a bit inspired to to I don't know to try new things maybe so either play on a different instrument or play a piece which wasn't originally written for for the guitar or for, or to another instrument or to change teachers <laughs> because that's also an exciting uh, challenge but I think really useful thing to do uh, for a musician and also, if they can apply for an Erasmus scholarship, go abroad, <laughs> do some new and exciting stuff because, because it is really useful and it is really interesting. And I, I think that I can say that, that those two terms I had at the Guildhall as an Erasmus student was really one of the best times of my life so far. So, so yeah, it was really good and everyone should try it. Oh, that's great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks very much for watching. There's a link in the description to Greg's channel. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.